Hold the physical word of God in your hands. Yes, amen. The logos, the written word. Now, of course, the rhema is the spoken word. But the written word of God, we can actually hold it in our hands. Thank you, Jesus. John said, John said, he said, we touch Jesus. We physically handle him. That's physical knowledge. You can have somebody tell you something, but until you experience it, it's a much deeper form of truth, experiential knowledge, much deeper. Hallelujah. Through the Spirit of God, we experience Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Beginning on verse, chapter 11 of Luke, uh, beginning on verse 5. Then he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him, at midnight and says to him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine <coughs> has come to me from a journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And from inside he answers and says, Do not bother me. The door has already been shut, and my children and I are in bed. We're all in bed. Don't bother us. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything, because he is his friend, number one, yet because of his persistence, number two, yeah. Yeah. relationship and persistence are big in God. Yes. Yeah. They're big. Hallelujah. He will get up and give him as much as he needs. Sometimes you just have to be persistent in your prayer. You have to be persistent. Now there are certain groups that don't really emphasize this. They say you, you pray one time and you just thank him for, for, that, for the answer. That's true, you do. But you still gotta be persistent. You gotta be, all right. You will get up and give his, him as much as he needs. So I say to you, this is Jesus to his disciples, ask and it will be given to you, seek you will find, knock, and it will be opened. Amen. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. To him who knocks, it will be opened. Now suppose one of you fathers was asked, is asked by his son for a fish. You will not give him a snake instead of a fish, will he? No. If he has asked for an egg, he will not give him a scorpion. Verse 12. So here's the punchline, verse 13. If you then, being evil, in other words, you're not good as God, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Hallelujah. 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 How much more will He give you the Holy Spirit if you ask for it? Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And notice he's, he's putting the whole emphasis here is on ask and seek and knock. Ask, seek, and knock. It's a process. I'm not going to preach on that. I'm just preaching on the fact that God will answer prayer and give you the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, turn with me to John's Gospel, chapter 7. This is Jesus speaking, okay, to his disciples again. John chapter 7, verse 37, 38, and 39. Now on the last day, the great day of the feast, okay? The great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Let him come to me. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this, John says, he spoke of the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. In other words, future events, if they were to receive it, of course, on the day of Pentecost. For the Spirit was not yet given. 
God had not, God the Father had not given the Spirit yet because Jesus was not yet glorified. He hadn't left the earth. Jesus said, I can't, the Spirit can't come because I'm not leaving yet. But when I leave, the Spirit can come. God had a whole plan on this. A whole plan. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Spirit, made way for the evangelization of the whole earth. Without the outpouring, you couldn't have the evangelizing of the Gentile world. Couldn't be done. No. It had to be. It had to be the onslaught of the Spirit of God had to come and just wave what wash millions of people into the kingdom of God. So it was a supernatural, sovereign, Holy Ghost move of God. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And it all was because it was the promise of the Father. Jesus said, God the Father has made a promise. It's the promise of the Father. He will baptize you. This is what we were reading this morning in Acts uh, chapter 1 and chapter 2. We were reading these verses. This is the promise of the Father. God's going to do this. It's everyone's inheritance, if you serve the Lord, to be used by the Spirit of God. That's what God is looking to do. God's not looking to frighten you. God's not looking to abuse you, but He's looking to use you. Amen. He's looking to use you for His honor and His glory. You never really find your position in life until you find yourself in God. Once you find yourself in God, then you find you who you are really are in, in, in life. First you get it in God, then you get situated in life. And uh, it doesn't, doesn't, depend, it doesn't matter what age group you're in, where you come from, as quick as you find God, really get into God, you will find your identity in Jesus. Okay? And so the Holy Spirit opens up a whole new life to us. A whole new life to us. Hallelujah. And in the midst of uh, life's situations, there's problems in life. How I many you know you don't go through life without problems? You don't go through life without being tested. You don't go through life without having things shake around you. Relationships. People upset. I don't want this. I'm out of here. With God, you can do anything. With God, you do anything. And with the Spirit of God, you accomplish everything that God has placed in front of you to do. The Holy Spirit. As you walk in, in the Spirit, God takes you through. Thank you, Lord. He takes you through. He does. <clears throat> we went to us. We were there was a, a family came to Zion back years ago, back in the eighties, and they were the Karoma family, the Karoma family from uh, Romania. They were from Romania, and the father physically walked out of Romania at night, and he walked all the way through Hungary through Romania into Hungary into Austria. It took him about a month, but every night, and he left his family in Romania, and then he came to the United States. And this was a walk of faith. And he named his ministry A Walk in the Light, because every night when he got up, he followed the light. That's all he did, followed the light. He slept in fields, slept in buildings, wherever he could find a place, under bushes, near a road, just slept. Got up in the morning, found something to eat, just kept on going. And uh, he was led by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit had led him and said, I'm going to take you out of Romania. Um, you've lived under this system long enough. You're going to go and I'm going to take your whole family out. I'm going to take everybody out. The whole family. And he had to leave his children and his wife home by themselves. And he, uh, he walked his way out. Just walked. And uh, I saw some amazing things in his life. I did. Some amazing testimonies about what God would do and how God used him in a tremendous way. And this, his whole ministry today is still based on walking in the light. They have uh, orphanages and homes in Romania. They've got places all over the place. In, in Austria, they do all kinds of things. 
But it's all because the Spirit of God led him. He was led by the Spirit to do what God had told him he was going to do. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. So number one, in the book of Luke, it is God's will to give you good things. But the biggest thing of ultimate, the ultimate gift is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That's the ultimate gift. Now notice, God was saying, if you ask for an egg, I won't give you this. You ask for a fish, I won't give you that. But you ask the Spirit for the, you ask God for the Spirit, He'll give it to you. Why? Because He wants you to have the right heart. He wants you to have the right heart. He'll give it to you. He's a Father. What does that show you? God is love. God is love. He's looking to love. He's looking to love. Say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. He's looking to love. Looking to love you. Looking to love us. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And then in the next group of verses, you see also the power of the Spirit. God is going to give us the Spirit. Change our lives. Amen. There's power there. Amen. Overcoming power. He knew, God knew that we could never live an overcoming life over sin without the Holy Spirit. He knew that. I mean, he was aware of that before the world began. He was aware of how this whole process would be. And so we thank God today. Here we are in the year 2019. And we are celebrating something that God did two, two millennia ago. 2,000 years ago. And God has been so faithful. I want to say this. God has been so faithful to bless every generation with a move of the Spirit. Now, you may not know about it, you may not have heard about it, you may not have seen it, but every single generation has been touched by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. God has never let one generation come that He hasn't worked in their lives. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. <clears throat> hallelujah. How many of you remember the charismatic renewal? Amen. How many of you were affected by the charismatic renewal? You know, I was. Amen. I saw some tremendous things in the charismatic renewal. You know. I remember going to a, uh, a folk mass to St. Francis Church over here one Friday night. Amen. God was moving. God was moving there. Amen. I used to go to prayer meetings in, on Staten Island in uh, a church called Our Lady Star of the Sea. You know that's not a Pentecostal name. You know that for sure. Amen. But anyway, God was moving in the basement there, down in the basement of the church. It was the Holy Ghost moving. Amen. It was, it was charismatic all the way. They were into the gifts, into prophecy, into tongues, interpretation. They were falling under the power. God was doing. God was changing. God was healing. Amen. And the first few weeks that I went, unlike Brother John, I knew why he couldn't breathe in the place because they were smoking there. They were smoking. And uh, in their mind, the church is upstairs. The church is holy. We don't smoke in the church. But down here, this is, a, this is the hall. They call it the hall. The bingo hall. And so we're allowed to smoke down here. And so I literally, I used to have to run in the corner to breathe. But they were still worshiping God. They were. And I saw God do some amazing things. Healings. Tremendous healings. And then... Uh, one, one Thursday night, the leading priest, the father who, who was there to just keep control of everything, and didn't go crazy, uh, Father Joe, he was from Italy, he spoke with a broken accent, very small man, you know, four feet high and four feet wide. And <laughs> he loved the Lord, he loved the Lord with all of his heart, he did. And he stood up, and very humbly, he said, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, Jesus does not want us to smoke in the Thursday night prayer meeting anymore. He used Jesus. Jesus got the blame. You know. <laughs> Jesus does not want us to smoke in the Thursday night prayer meeting anymore. And the place went into an uproar. This is not the church. This is what's going on here. We were just having a good time. You could pray and still smoke. You know. Uh, he said, no, God doesn't want that. He had the, the mind of God. It was the Holy Spirit speaking to the group. 
Of course, I was thinking, God, I can't go to many more of these premiums. I can't breathe in here. Literally, I can't breathe. You know, I used to open the door literally, and then hold it open, and then I would look down under the cloud because it was like London fog in there. And I said, "Who's in there? Is you know, is he is Pete Lisi in there? Yeah, there he is. Okay, I'll go sit with Pete. You know, so." <clears throat> but the spirit blew through the place and changed hundreds of lives hundreds of lives were changed were changed and baptized in the spirit and their lives were changed and they were never the same say hallelujah give the lord a hand amen so we're gonna we're gonna come around the altar today we're